This meeting is being recorded. And thank you for thank joining, you for joining us, today. us today. It is now, it is my, now pleasure my pleasure to introduce, to introduce Dennis, Dennis Irvin, Irvin, CDT, with our with presentation, our presentation. Getting the Agile Removables, removables the, latest the latest in digital, digital tech, tech, venture, venture technology. technology. Take it away, Take Dennis. It away, Dennis. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. And uh, good evening, everybody. And welcome to uh, Getting the Agile Removables, the latest in venture, uh, digital venture technology. Uh, tonight, we have an information-packed seminar. We have a lot of information. But before we go into digital technology, we're going, going to address the analog side or traditional way of doing ventures and how it applies over to the, uh, uh, to the digital side. So, uh, you know, we've come a long way with venture technology in the last five years, you know, and digital technology is advancing <clears throat> at a rapid rate, you know, and, uh, you know, for years on the venture side, we really didn't advance that much, you know, and uh, on the Crown and Bridge side we did, but that did, uh, dentures weren't advancing as, as fast as Crown and Bridge. So now we're at a stage now where digital denture technology and venture technology is really advancing quickly. So we're going to touch on that also tonight. But again, welcome, and we're going to get started right away because we have really a lot of information to talk about tonight. And I'll take any questions at the end of the seminar, and I hope you enjoy it. So here's the outline of the presentation. We're going to talk about denture technology, looking back and moving forward, occlusal record taking for digital and analog full dentures, the reduction of chair time and adjustments on removables, a digital versus analog full denture techniques, Occlusal schemes, including lingualized occlusion and centric occlusion. Case design, milling, and printing techniques. So that's going to be, we're going to compare milling and printing and then compare it to analog also. We're going to talk about patient acceptance and communication with the dental laboratory, which is going to, is one of the most important aspects of a successful case. So the great challenge, digital versus analog. You know, uh, a lot of uh, people think that you can just jump into, uh, into the digital aspect of things uh, without really knowing the science behind it, but uh, you really need to know the science behind uh, denture technology to apply that over to the digital side. So we're gonna talk about that in a little while. So, removable technology, looking back. I mean, you know, so we've come a long way from the picture on top, which was uh, George Washington's dentures, and we had these old vulcanite rubberized dentures back in the 40s and 50s. So, uh, you know, right now we have such great, great materials out on the market, you know, and to utilize in our full denture and denture technology. You know, this is what we had and we come a long way. And now we have highly aesthetic denture teeth that look like natural teeth and unsurpassed denture based materials, which looks like, they look like natural gingiva that are high impact and flexural strength and hold up for years in the mouth. And uh, we'll talk about some of the scientific aspects of that in a little while. But here's some of the dentures that uh, I've made over the years. And these are with uh, you know, denture-based staining, trying to mimic natural gingiva, and uh, just to try and make it a little bit more natural. We want that patient to feel like they're not wearing a denture. You know, the patient doesn't want to look like he's wearing a denture. They want, they want to look like they're, they're natural teeth and natural gingiva and natural aesthetics. So we can match the existing gingiva on a patient, like I just mentioned. Do dramatic uh, gingiva uh, replication like this denture, this full upper and full lower denture. And the techniques are, you know, varied techniques that you can utilize with that too. We won't get too much into that tonight. I'll mention it a few times, but uh, really can match, match the patient's gingiva exactly with the, the uh, gingiva staining kits that are out there on the market today. No, and we can mimic natural gingiva anatomy on wax try-ins with the, the traditional analog met methods using, uh, utilizing artistry and various shaded waxes. And I'll show some of the dentures that I, I uh, produce uh, in a laboratory, which I mimic the natural gingiva on the patient in the try-in. And uh, we'll talk about that in a little while also. So, and here's one of the setups that I've done with the it's a full upper, full lower setup with a uh, gingiva wax uh, anatomy here. So with different colors to match the patient's gingiva. Here's another one, a full upper, full lower denture. This is with uh, a Vita Pen plus teeth and different color, uh, color waxes to, to match the patient's gingiva. So, you know, we have, a, um, we can do diagnostic wax up for Crown of Ridge. Why can't we do a nice uh, characterized wax up for the patient to see and to show the patient what that final denture is going to look like. So we can do that on the analog side. And now we can print and mill accurate and aesthetic dentures with amazing fit, form, and function. So we come a long way, especially on a printed side. You know, if you asked me about a year ago, a year and a half ago, how, what do you think of printed dentures? I, I didn't like them. I didn't like the results. You know, they were tracking bacteria, they were brittle. Uh, they didn't hold up in the mouth. They didn't look natural. It had that bubblegum color and a gingiva, and it, they weren't really, you know, uh, really suitable for patients to wear for long term. But we've come a long, long way with those types of dentures, and we'll talk about that in, in a few minutes. So, 
So this is printed technology we're going to be talking about. This is going to be the dense ply uh, digital denture, the Lucitone printed denture we'll talk about in a little while. Uh, we'll talk about mill dentures. Uh, we have a couple different systems we're going to talk about tonight, and uh, we'll have the pros and cons, uh, mostly pros of each of them. So, so where are we going with denture technology? So many U United States dental laboratories are seeing a dramatic increase in full dentures and, and, and implant dentures and partial dentures. So the, yeah, the denture business is growing at a dramatic pace. So, and there's more income opportunities for dentists and laboratories, dental manufacturers. So, you know, you look in a dental magazine now, and even laboratory magazines, dental magazines, uh, you see so many things about dentures and so many advertisements. And, and you go to trade shows and you see a lot with, uh, you know, digital technology with dentures, and it's all over the place. I mean, that all you see is between milling and printing and, and uh, latest denture materials. And uh, really sometimes they outnumber the, the Crown and Bridge uh, uh, displays at these, at these shows. So, but more people need dentures now than ever before, you know, and the industry predicts a tremendous growth now and through 2050. So we have to prepare, we have to be prepared with technology to, to, uh, to accommodate those dentures. You know, and experienced denture technicians are the guides for dentists and expectation space and success in denture prosthesis. You know, this is a quote from Dr. Stephen Wagner, a prosthodontist, you know, and professionals who understand dentures are the ones who understand smile design. This is from a quote from Dr. Christian Coachman, happened to be at a Seattle study group meeting back in, uh, in January and Dr. Kelsman was speaking and it just caught my attention when he said professionals who understand dentures are the ones who understand smile design. And I said no you're right because you have to understand that uh, that space between that intraocclusal space of 40 millimeters or more we have to fill that space in with something that's going to be aesthetic and functional and we need to know the science behind how to do that. But we want to move in the right direction with digital and analog. We want to combine both of them. So we combine the, the, the correct sciences from the traditional analog over to digital. And we create that latest technology with digital to, to come up with the finest entry you can possibly make. So, but that all includes, includes communication also. Communication is key when it comes to planning these cases. Let's talk a little bit about digital and analog. You know, we need to utilize the same fundamental prosthodontic processes to make a digital denture as we always have. You know, the clinician still needs to communicate and provide the technician with the necessary information for a functional case. Uh, digital technology is still evolving, like I mentioned before, and it's improving at a rapid pace. You know, even uh, last couple of years, I've gone to digital denture symposiums. It's usually, we're gonna have one in a couple of weeks also. IDT Magazine puts it on, and uh, last year was in person, this year is, is, uh, is virtual. But it's amazing the advances every year that I see on the digital side of denture technology. And basic knowledge of prosthodontic principles, including providing accurate impressions, is even more important in the digital world because many details can be seen on a large screen, which could not otherwise be detected. So you can see so much more detail on the screen now than just looking at an impression. All the anatomical landmarks you need to see and need to uh, um, utilize for uh, a successful denture. And dentists still need to understand the importance of capturing accurate, accurate maxillary mandibular records, vertical dimension, and centric relation. That's really important. So, and tech, technicians need to continue to analyze ridge relationships uh, and then select appropriate anterior and posterior teeth uh, to the desired occlusal scheme. There are software programs which can pick out those teeth for you, uh, and we'll talk about and elaborate more on that later on in the, in the webinar. So, but growing edentulism, you know, more than 36 million Americans have no teeth and 90% have, have dentures, you know, and 90% of the patients are not happy with the fit of their dentures. So, um, when we get into digital ventures, we talk about the comfort level being raised with clinicians because over the years, they've seen so many uh, office visits and a lot of adjustments, a lot of chair time, and they're kind of shell-shocked when it comes to dentures. And I've seen over the last year, year and a half, the, the feedback that I'm getting from clinicians saying that they have a better comfort level with digital dentures than they do with traditional dentures. So, so let's look at the digital denture. We wanna create a more personal service. We wanna build a, an intelligent de a design platform we want to reinvent productivity in business processes. So uh, uh, you would want to engage your patients, empower your employees, and optimize your operations and transform your products because this is where technology is going. Digital is big now, and it's going to keep on growing and getting bigger and bigger. So, so let's talk about best practices for full dentures. We're going to go back to the analog side now and the science behind what makes a successful case. And I talked about the comfort level earlier with, with clinicians on dentures. Uh, but you know, if these dentures, even on an analog side, if, if, the, if the, uh, the planning is done correctly, you utilize the right materials and occlusal schemes, you shouldn't have to spend a lot of time with chair time and adjustments. So let's talk about the correct protocol for this. So 
So we can communicate. We have all these, all these forms of communication everywhere at our fingertips around the country, but sometimes we just can't communicate correctly on a case. And I, I've seen this, especially on in, implant cases between the clinician and the laboratory, but communication is still key for a successful case. You know, we depend on the clinician for the you know, clinical knowledge and training, the assessment of the patient, the appropriate feedback and, uh, and treat, treatment planning to us. And of course, detailed um, authorization or work authorization form. We wanna make sure that you give us all the information we need on that work authorization form. Uh, so we won't be calling you and wasting your time and delaying the case. We wanna make sure that, that all the information is there on the Rx form uh, in the laboratory. You know, I've seen some cases where it says uh, set up, uh, do set up shade A A3, you know, so we want to make sure maybe we'll get some digital photos from the patient. We need digital photography. And sometimes I even get little short videos of patients going into different excursions if there's a difficult bite. And that helps us at the bench. So we want to, we want to create that experience, even at the bench with our technicians, to almost have that, that feeling of the, uh, the, the patient being at the bench with us. Because all we're going by is the information you give us. So uh, to make these ventures. And of course, the use of quality materials. The communication with the certified dental technician, you want you know, the technical expertise and knowledge of procedures and materials. We'll give you feedback on what you give us, the appropriate feedback on, on impressions, bites, shades, et cetera. I mean, it's still the number one phone call I think I make in the laboratories on, on impressions. So we wanna utilize uh, you know, that our experience to, to guide you and help us help you communicate and communicate together on a successful case. And we'll talk about digital technician, uh, di digital impressions in a little while too. So, uh, and the pros and cons of that with fully dentalist cases. Case planning with the clinician. We wanna get together with you, case plan and give the patient the right expectations on, on, on cases, especially with uh, implant cases. And of course, digital photography and quality materials come into play. So some of the problems with full dentures in the past has been compromised stability, poor neuromuscular coordination and occlusion. I see a lot of occlusal schemes that are not correct for the patient. Uh, low tolerance of mucosal tissue for removable acrylic base, especially on a lower with sore spots. If it's not stabilized and not in the occlusal, right in the, right in the occlusal uh, scheme, you're not gonna have a stable denture and it's gonna move around. So we need that right occlusal scheme, and correct scheme for that. And patients have a desire for more stability and comfort. So, and the comfort level of the dentist is compromised, like I mentioned, mentioned earlier on full dentures due to the excessive chair time. The goals and final outcome, we wanna create natural aesthetics. We wanna enhance facial appearance, compensate for lost soft tissue, and enhance function with the right occlusal scheme. And we'll talk about centric occlusion and, and, and a little bit of with the lingualized occlusion in a little while. We wanna create a denture with longevity, impact resistance, and bacteria resistance. You know, an elimination of the, the reduction of adjustment on occlusion and sore spots. And I'm seeing with digital dentures now, there's so much less adjustments, especially with occlusion. You know, and sore spots are really uh, going by the wayside with these digital dentures because of the accuracy. So uh, we have a lot to be excited about when it comes to these types of uh, restorations. So, and some of the common mistakes in fabricating a full denture is uh, you know, poor treatment planning, distorted final impressions, inaccurate master model, insufficient occlusal records, and the poor choice of materials. So uh, we need all that information even with digital dentures. So. So let's go over the clinical protocol on removables. You know, usually it's a five visit uh, scenario. So the first visit, you're gonna take the preliminary impression and we try to get a good preliminary, impre preliminary impression. If we get a good preliminary impression, we're gonna make a good custom tray so you can border mold it and get a good final impression. And the third visit, we'll get the, you'll take the bite registration and occlusal records and you'll get us, give us the information that we need in the laboratory to make a successful case. And then the fourth visit, we'll send you the tooth setup and wax trying. And then fifth visit, if everything goes well at the fourth visit, we have a fifth visit in the final insertion. So, and a visit can be eliminated if the functional, if a functional impression is taken inside the occlusal base plate, rim base plate. So uh, we see this a lot. We get this with a lot of cases now. And so we, we make uh, the occlusal rim base plate. You can border mold it, take an impression, and also take an occlusal record at the same time. So you're eliminating uh, one visit there. So, uh, and it's, it's, that's, really enables you to make a denture quicker, but it's not all about making a denture fast. You wanna make something that's gonna be uh, long, long, have longevity and fit and function, so we gonna make it the right way. So first visit, I mentioned the preliminary impression. We wanna utilize a stock tray and take an impression with quality alginate material, uh, or if you wanted to polyvinyl, but most of the time we're getting an alginate material on the uh, preliminary, preliminary impression. 
and make sure you capture all those anatomical landmarks. I mean, the hamula notches, the periphery, uh, and the rectum molar pads on the lower, this is gonna enable us at the laboratory to make a good custom tray and a good accurate custom tray. So the second visit with the custom tray impression, you know, we're gonna place adhesive on the borders and I, I make the, the trays about two millimeters short of the periphery. And uh, what you'll do is put a little adhesive on the borders, put a little heavy body or monophase material on the borders. Some doctors like to use a, you know, a little a compound, but most of the time we're getting, uh, you know, the PVS material. So take that PVS material, put it on the borders, put it in the patient's mouth, and manipulate those cheeks and, and, and lips so you can capture all the musculature in the mouth so you can get a good border mold. You take that out of, the, out of the mouth and come over with a medium body material and take that good accurate impression. So and it'll give us a good impression with all the anatomical landmarks. And I know a lot of doctors who use, use light body material too, but they have to be careful, careful with the light body because that, that really runs out of the tray and sometimes it doesn't give you enough compression. So again, we wanna make sure those borders and anatomical landmarks are captured uh, and this way we can move ahead with our, our denture. And then the third visit, we're gonna get the, give, you, uh, give you a bi uh, occlusal rim so we can get the bi registration and occlusal records. Uh, so, and when you're doing this, the best way to do this is have the patient in an upright position. You know, we want to get him, him or her into the physiological rest position. And so they're not struggling, but we're getting into that position and struggling going into excursion. So uh, it's real important to have that patient in an upright position and comfortable and get that jaw relaxed in that, in that position. And we want to get the information that we need on that occlusal rim from you. This, uh, the midline, the cuspid line, the high lip line, and all those things are going to help us when we're, set, we're at the bench. And we see a lot of times that the, uh, the clinician is actually setting maybe a couple of anterior teeth on, a, on, a bite rib, on the bite ribs. That'll give us some guidelines of, of where to go and where the, end, uh, where the incisal edge is going to end also. So all this information is pertinent, pertinent to us in the, in the laboratory when setting up our, our denture teeth. So let's look at the, I spend a lot of time on occlusion and, and wax rims uh, when I do my seminars. I just took some of the slides from my, some, a couple of my other seminars just to give some of the basic uh, you know, direction on, on wax rim. So let's talk about wax rim dimensions. On an upper anterior, the wax rim height is about 22 millimeters from the periphery to the incisal edge and the occlusal width is about eight to 10 millimeters. So what we try to do in a laboratory is try to contour this birem almost to the point where it's almost gonna be where the denture teeth are gonna be set. This way, you'll, you won't spend the time cutting away wax, adding wax, and it just takes a lot of time and effort. And so we try to get that information to you correctly on a nice contoured vibrant. So, and on the lower, uh, the wax rim height from the periphery to the incisal edge is usually on an average about 18 millimeters. And again, the height is about eight to 10. But we try to cover the retromolar pad about two thirds of the height of the retromolar pad. And that's usually where that second molar is gonna wind up when we set our denture teeth. So, Necessary information from you, the doctor, and we need that smile line. Uh, sometimes the doctor will draw the line where the occlusal plane is. That'll help us out when we're setting our denture teeth. Uh, the canine line, we need the cuspid lines and the midline. So we, as I mentioned before, we wanna make, make it seem like we have the patient at the bench with us. So with the proper articulation system and the proper information on these occlusal records, we're in great shape. And again, another way of eliminating one appointment also, instead of doing a functional impression inside the birem, if a patient has an existing denture, you know, that's really in decent shape and the occlusion is not too bad, you could take a wash impression inside the uh, existing denture. And you can also border mold it and take an impression uh, and then take a bite registration. And on a digital side, we'll talk about this later, you can actually scan these in your office and send us the STL file. So we'll have a, uh, a model and a bite registration in, in one visit. So. So eliminating one appointment using a functional impression. This is what I was talking about before. It's almost like a custom tray with a birem on, on top of it. So uh, you, can, it's, you can see on the right-hand side, it's about two to three millimeters short of the periphery. So you can border mold, take a nice impression, and get us the information on the occlusal rim that we need to get started with the setup. And there's, your, there's why the uh, impression where we pour up the models and we're ready to go. So, and then the fourth visit is a tooth, tooth setup and wax triumph. So you're gonna check phonetics, occlusion and shade and make sure aesthetics are pleasing to the patient. So these are just some of the setups that I've done and we're gonna make sure it looks good and feels good and it's, just, it's pleasing to the patient and uh, it's gonna be functional. And the fifth visit, if everything goes well, this final insertion, you wanna check for fit, form and function and uh, check for pressure spots and equilibrate the occlusion. And we try to put everything on a semi-adjustable or fully adjustable articulate, especially on full mouth reconstruction cases. So we kind of eliminate a lot of that uh, equilibration on the occlusion. 
And even post-processing, we go back to the articulator to make sure it's exactly what you gave us, the information you gave us as far as occlusion goes. So, so the traditional denture workflow in the laboratory, pretty much what I talked about before. We have four, uh, four models for preliminary impression, our final impression, articulate, set up the teeth and wax, and we process and finish. Now, talking about printed denture workflow in a laboratory, we're doing everything the same except for that third step. And what we're going to do, we're going to scan that final impression and bite registration, and we're going to design it, and you're going to do a, we're going to give you a printed try-in as opposed to that wax try-in I, try I showed you earlier. So it takes a little bit of getting used to, and I'll show you some photos of that in a little while. So, you know, I know a lot of clinicians like to maybe heat up their spatula and move teeth around and turn, twist and turn teeth. You can't do that with a printed try-in. So it's more of a monolithic looking try-in. It's all white. We can add some, uh, some uh, characterization to it to make it look a little more natural. But uh, I'll elaborate on this in a little while. You can mark the printed try-ins with a Sharpie. And what we'll do is rescan it. If the midline is off, we can rescan it. You can take a new bite with the printed try-in. We can rescan it and merge it with our existing file and we'll have all that information. And many times we don't even have to do another try-in. We can go right to a finish. So, so instead, of, instead of having this uh, traditional way of doing our try-ins, we're gonna send you something like this. This is a, a printed try-in. And you're still gonna check occlusion, make sure the aesthetics are pleasing to the patient. And, uh, and if, there is, if there is a problem, you can always grind those teeth, take another uh, maybe polyvinyl bite. And uh, if you wanna put markings on the, on, on the uh, printed denture, you can, and we'll scan that. And all that information will be in, incorporated into the uh, existing case and the software. And also the workflow comparison on the clinical side, everything's the same, uh, except that fourth, fourth visit. And that's when we're gonna have that printed try -in. So uh, pretty, much, pretty much the same all the way around. So at this point, you know, I don't mean to downplay digital on when I'm saying this, uh, it's more digital for the laboratory at this point than it is on the clinical side. You know, until we're able to capture that uh, edentulous impression, uh, intra -oral, intra oral impression with edentulous ridges in the, in the, on the clinical side, um, if successfully, uh, then it won't be all digital. So we're getting there though, and it, there have been successful techniques with this, and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Uh, a lot of people tell me, hey, what are you talking about? I, I've been doing, you know, full, full arch uh, scanning for, for a while now. I've been very successful with it. So, and there are a lot of people have been successful with it. But sometimes it's just hard to capture those undercuts. And especially on, you know, on, you know the hamulon notch and you know, uh, on, on the lingual of the lower myohyloid and also the retromolar pad. Sometimes it's hard to capture that. And we need all those net landmarks. We need all those natural landmarks for a good fitting denture. So, again, for you, we're gonna, for the fourth visit, we're going to give you that uh, printed try -in. So what about intraoral scanning on full arch cases? Well, scanning is possible, but still not perfect. And additional steps must be taken and case selection is critical. You know, so you can use them a double Delvo pencil to help with the stitching issues when scanning a particular arch where there are very few landmarks or reference. This helps uh, with uh, the successful scan of a case, but not all scans. So cases with tissue texture and landmarks will be easy to scan as well. And we must make sure we capture all those anatomical landmarks. So there have been successful strategies with uh, uh, scanning edentulous patients. Edentulous patients. Dr. LaRusso, uh, who works with Ivoclar and he does a, lot, does a lot of articles and writes a lot of articles, he had his own way of um, uh, designing and scanning edentulous uh, uh, patients. And, you know, he uses three-shaped trios. And what he did, he had a special design pattern that he used uh, when he was scanning these intentional patients, intentional patients with three shaped trios, and he was, he was very successful with it. So as you can see, what he did, you know, on the left hand side with this upper denture, you know, he goes from uh, the right to the left, and then he goes from the left to the right, and then he'll go the paddle air palatal area, and he'll go around the periphery. So he has a way of doing this where he's been very successful. But you know, sometimes you really can't get that, you know, that uh, scanner all the way in to get that those capture those undercuts. So, uh, but he's he's been successful with it, and he has, has a great article. That you can go online and, and uh, look that up and uh, and read that article, really good article. So, and then the Journal of Prosthetic Prosthetic Research is uh, a, a, a test. This is the, in February of 2020. It was an in vivo feasibility study with computerized optical impression taking of edentulous jaws, and they did 29 patients. And their conclusion was within they, within the limitations of the present study, the investigative scanners were not able to fully replace a conventional impression for the fabrication of a clean, complete denture. So they really weren't successful with their, their study, you know, but then again, look at the patterns they used. They was much different than the patterns that uh, Dr. LaRusso used. 
So, uh, you know, perhaps Dr. LaRusso has onto something here, and I believe he is with this, capturing this. So, and I think in the next year or so, I think you're going to see uh, fully evangelist arches being captured very successfully in Charlie. So, so let's talk a little bit about uh, analog denture setups, and we're going to work our way into the uh, uh, digital aspect of things. Okay. So the traditional setups. So let's talk about the average value articulator and or fully adjustable articulator and semi-adjustable articulator. So I mentioned earlier, I want to try to mimic jaw relationship of the patient. So we try to use a semi-adjustable or fully adjustable articulator on these types of cases. And one of the reasons why I'm showing you this is because on the digital side, they utilize the same type of science, science behind it. So actually it's a you know, digital articulation that mimics a, a semi-adjustable and fully adjustable articulator. So what we're doing here, I'm just setting this up on a, on a semi-adjustable articulator. I wanna set the models to the occlusal plane. So what I'll do is actually have to wrap a rubber band around the incisal pin, and I'll go around to the notches on the posterior region on the back part of the articulator. And most of the good articulating systems have those notches on, it, on, the, on the back of that articulator. And this is gonna be your canvas plane or occlusal plane. And I really wanna set that denture, especially with the upper denture according to that occlusal plane, because it's gonna make it easier for us to set that denture up correctly, you know, in the laboratory. So uh, again, you can see here, nice and even. We're ready, got the information we need on the occlusal rim, and then we can set our denture teeth. And over here, it's just showing the lower teeth set it set first. What I do when I set my denture teeth on, in an analog way or traditional way, I'll set my upper anteriors, my lower anteriors, my upper two bicuspids, my lower two bicuspids, and I'll use a special template. <clears throat> excuse me, and I'll I'll get that Curvis B and Curvis Wilson and I'll have my working and balancing and have a good functional setup. So here we go, we have the lower setup, we're setting up our denture teeth, and I think all of you know how long it takes, takes to set up a denture. Sometimes it can take a long time. You know, this is like a perfect class, class one bite here, so uh, it's, it's pretty easy to set up here, but you have to set these teeth individually. And now on a digital side, we don't have to worry about that. We have full arch setups coming into play in, arti in the articulator, virtual articulator within seconds. So here's the full upper and full lower denture setup on the articulator. And then we wax it up, like I showed you before, with a nice contour of the, with the, uh, uh, with the wax trying. So how do we select anterior teeth? So there's a lot of different ways. Usually, I like to show this picture because usually facial form equals, uh, uh, facial form equals the tooth form, especially on centrals. So you look at the face, if it's a square face, pretty much gonna have a square central, square tapering, square tapering central. And if you look at the upper arch, of a denture, you look at a model of an upper denture and you hold it up and you have the um, amulet knots facing down, it looks like a central. So this is how I've been picking out my anterior teeth all these years, I've been doing this over 40 years now uh, and I've been very successful with it. And I look at that upper arch and I see, hey, this is kind of a, like a square tapering arch. And I look at that arch and I, I correspond it with the uh, anterior teeth. And I usually get my, dent my the correct mold in the denture teeth. So. Again, we're gonna break up the face here, and this is like the information we needed on the occlusal rim. We're gonna, we want that midline, the cuspid line, the high lip line, smile line. So very important. So that's why I like to get digital photos of the patient's face, and it helps us when we're setting our denture teeth. But we have to determine the mold. And I talked, to, I, I mentioned before, the shape of the arch, that's pretty much how I do it. I'd say, I'd look at the shape of the arch, and sometimes we'll get a study model of the existing denture. We have to look at the widths of the six anteriors, Many times when you give us that cuspid line on, on, the, on the occlusal rim, we can measure from cuspid to cuspid and go to the tooth manufacturer's tooth chart and tell us what size tooth to put in that setup. And I'll also have corresponding suggestions for the posterior teeth. Okay, the concerns in the width of the six anteriors, the shape, the shape of the centrals, and of course the shade. So I mentioned earlier, tooth form equal facial form, square face, square tooth, and so on. I like to show these old slides here. They're kind of old, but they, they're still applicable to what we're doing today with dentures. So, and then you have natural anatomical landmarks. You know, the tips of the canines are usually equal to the width of the nose. And the width of the centrals are usually equal to the width of the filter. You want a harmonious aesthetic setup, something that looks natural. You know, I, I kid around, I don't want something that looks like a pink smoothie with everything straight, you have a smooth pink uh, acrylic, it doesn't look natural. You want something that's gonna, not gonna look like a denture. So. So I want to just briefly talk about uh, using the correct teeth and, and setting these central teeth, and then we'll get into the digital aspect of it. Let's see how we're doing with time. Good, doing, doing it all the time. So we want to use the correct teeth. 
you know, I hear this all the time. I, every time I give a lecture uh, and I'm talk, going around the room and asking uh, clinicians, even people in the room saying, does everybody know the difference between, between denture teeth? And, you know, a lot of people don't. You know, there's so many different tooth companies out there and really want to use correct denture teeth, something that's going to wear like natural dentition, something that's going to be uh, aesthetic. And I'll talk about that a little bit more now. We want something that's homogenous material throughout the entire tooth. So uh, there's a lot of tooth companies out there. You have Vita, Reyes Colser, uh, you have um, Ivoclar, um, and a lot of these companies have uh, ceramic fillers, like uh, Vita has ceramic fillers in their teeth that wear like natural dentition. They have 3D master shades that can match a crown or bridge case with combination cases. You want something with high mechanical strength, something that's tissue friendly, plaque resistant, color stable, and it's gonna have chip free grinding. Many of the denture teeth out there, once you start grinding, especially on the posterior, you start grinding those in, in the occlusion and you get past that, that first layer, you're getting to a softer layer of that tooth and that's gonna wear it down a lot quicker, especially on the implant cases. I stress this all the time. You really have to use a good quality tooth on implant cases because it's a proven fact that patients wear down denture teeth on implant cases faster than they would on any other type of case. So when something the same size as natural teeth, something with high wear resistance and on the anterior teeth, I like to use the anterior teeth with lingual anatomy for better phonetics, because especially with new denture uh, patients, their, their tongue tends to slide along the lingual of the tooth and they tend to lisp for a while. So with lingual anatomy on the, on the teeth, it, it really gives the patient better phonetics. As you can see here, these are actually Vita teeth and I put a nice rugae in the palatal area to replicate the patient's natural rugae. And then we have this uh, anatomical uh, lingual on the, on the denture teeth. So really nice and feels more comfortable and natural for the patient. A wide occlusal surface we're looking for on a posterior teeth, especially with partial dentures. I see a lot of partial dentures when I look at them. I look at the posterior denture teeth, they're so much narrower than natural teeth. But we want a wider occlusal surface even on a full case because it aids in chewing and swallowing and it aids in tearing that food and it enables the patient to function much better. So let's talk about real quickly setting up anterior teeth. We want to set these upper anterior teeth individually and parallel to the pupil line. And lower incisal edges are parallel to the upper incisal edges. So set up our uppers first and our lower anteriors. And then once we have an anterior teeth set, we want to decide what kind of occlusal scheme we're going to pick. So you know, about 72% of laboratories are using semi-anatomical and anatomical teeth. I still see a lot of laboratories using zero degree teeth as they go around lecturing. And uh, I'm not a big fan of zero degree teeth or five degree teeth. I do utilize them when it's a, a severe class three bite. And I'll utilize those types of teeth with a lower cuspal inclination, but I want something that the patient can chew and tear their food, not slide like a, like a cow. We want to make sure that patient's able to chew and tear their food. So we have to determine the, we have to determine the occlusal scheme on these cases here. And these are some of the different uh, occlusal schemes out there. We have that lingual occlu lingualized occlusion where the lingual cusp of the upper is going into the central fossa of the lower. And with implant cases, this is going to relieve any off-axis stress on the implant. And when you have off-axis stress on an implant, they're going to fail. So uh, not only with implant cases, though, we utilize lingualized occlusion in a lot of full denture cases, too. And especially with older patients, we find a lot, a lot of times it's more comfortable for them to chew. So with different degrees of teeth, typically the smaller the ridge, the less degree of cuspal inclination, and the greater the ridge, the greater degree of cuspal inclination. But not everybody can tolerate that high degree of cuspal inclination. So I like a denture tooth anywhere from 15 degree to 23 degree cuspal inclination. I've gone as far as 33 degree cuspal inclination, like for Phanaris teeth and physiodentist teeth, and they work out well also, but for certain patients. We want to align the occlusal surfaces towards the center of the cranium. And when I don't align those uh, occlusal surfaces to, towards the center of the cranium, in other words, when I don't have a curve of Wilson, that's when I'm utilizing my lingualized occlusion because I want those teeth to be a little more flat uh, on a rib, a bridge without curving towards the lingual. And because I want those forces of those upper, that upper lingual to go right down on the, on the central fossa of those lowers uh, to, to reduce any off axis stress. So, and the actual inclination of the posterior is one that you want to be sent, centered to the cranium, as you can see here. So, let's just check our notes here. We want to set and make sure the central fossa of the teeth are on a lower ridge. Uh, we, want to, we want to deviate. We don't want to deviate from that because if we're off the lower ridge, the patient, that denture is not going to be stable. The patient's going to move around. It's going to move around during eating, and the patient's going to get sore spots. We want to check our vertical inclination of the posteriors, our curve of Wilson and our curve of Spee. And just a review here, there's your curve of Wilson going from buccal to lingual. 
And then we have a nice natural curve from anterior to posterior where the curve is speaking. So we want a nice harmonious transition to posteriors, and we want a nice individualized setup here, as you can see here. So, and we want to check with working and balancing and function without any interference with the anterior teeth. So with lingualized occlusion, like I mentioned before, you know, years ago, I used to use a higher degree of tooth on the upper and a lower degree of tooth on the lower, and I used to make my own lingualized occlusion. But now there's specialized lingualized occlusion te teeth out there. This happens to be from Vita. I helped to design these teeth years ago with them and uh, when I used to work with the company. And uh, Ivathlar has a great tooth also, lingualized occlusion. Uh, but you really want to get that lingual cusp on it's in, it's in the central fossa of the lower. And that buccal cusp is flared out a little bit more than, that, than normal. And that helps put, push the cheek away from the dentist so the patient doesn't have the bite, uh, doesn't, uh, eliminates that biting of the cheek. So for the full denture patient, we want to, you know, it's a reduction of forces with a transfer to the denture and the rest position and to the underlying bone structure. So you can really have, uh, do damage to the underlying bone structure if that occlusion is, uh, is not correct. And for implant supported dentures, like I mentioned earlier, there's reduction of the lateral side to side forces on an implant and lateral forces could cause the implant to fail. As you can see here, this is a buccal cusp of flared out and you have that lingual, uh, lingualized occlusion. And there's your final setup here. So now we're gonna get into digital dentistry. So I've got some good stuff going on here. I'm gonna talk about fabricating a, a printed denture. And we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the Lucitone printed denture, which I've been very successful with. It's a great denture. And then we'll compare it to the, uh, the uh, milled, milled partial, uh, milled uh, full dentures. So, so printed case processing. We wanna digitate the case by scanning and putting the information into the computer. Case design, we have a printed try-in and we print our final denture. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna have you know, enter all the information into the computer on the case, and then we're ready to scan our model or on the impression. So most of the time what I'm doing, I'm scanning the model. And I get a nice, look at the pictures on the left-hand side here. Look how accurate and detailed they are. So we scan the final impression. And then what I'll do is I'll scan the bite. So I can either, you know, put the whole articulator in there like this, and I put little um, uh, marks on the vertical wall of the model to aid. It aids in alignment when scanning. Uh, but what I do, instead of doing this, I do this when I have articulators like this. Most of the time I'm not using the articulators. I'm using a magnetic mount on a semi-adjustable articulator. So I can take it off the articulator. I'll spray a scan spray on there. I put it into my three shape and scan it. And that bite registration is going to merge with the models that we just scanned. And we're going kind to of get ready to do our, our, our virtual setup. So articulation with centric and lateral adjustments. The virtual articulator allows for centric and lateral excursions, saving the densest valuable chair time on adjustments. So let's look at this here with the uh, articulation with centric and lateral uh, adjustments here. So but this can all be done virtually and you have all those contact, contact points there. <clears throat> now on a printed denture, I wanna make this clear, you can only do this when you're printing the teeth. Uh, with the dense ply system right now, all we're able to do is full upper against full lower. Uh, and I'll explain that a little bit more later. So this is with, if you're going with them against natural dentition, the teeth have to be printed. And there are other systems out there today that do print denture teeth. But with the dense ply system, it's right now, it's just full upper and full lower uh, dentures, full upper against full lower. So, and digital denture setups, the digital articula articulation, the impressions are digitally articulated to the by registration using the specialized software and denture teeth are placed following the arch shape and bite registration. And the vertical height can be adjusted in the software option and to open or close the bite if necessary. We have full arch setups like I mentioned before. So instead of those individual teeth you're setting one by one, you could do this in a matter of seconds. And I'll elaborate on that in a little bit more in a little while. So the software proposal is, is reasonable and can be modified using the software tools. So whether you're using 3Shape, Exacad, or whatever software system, most of them have the same tools that you can utilize and, and to adjust it. Okay, and even, I wanna mention this, so even with the software tool, every aspect of the digital wax up can be adjusted. So we can do a carved wax up in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the final denture, also part, like carvings in the final denture, so we don't have to worry about finishing. So what I did in the wax try-in, we can also do that in the printed try-in, uh, but we can, it's gonna eliminate a lot of time for us at the laboratory in finishing these dentures. And there's your completed denture design. Once we have a completed denture design, then we uh, send the information to the printer and we print our, our, our uh, printed try-in. So now with Lucitone, they actually come in the printed try-in material actually comes in different shades from A1 to all the way to uh, the bleach shades. And if I mentioned earlier also, if you need to adjust this or the midline's off, you can take a Sharpie, 
mark that midline where it's supposed to be. You can take a new bite. If the denture's not fitting uh, correctly, you can take another wash impression and we'll scan that or you can scan it in the office and we'll merge it with the file that we already have. Now, I know it takes a little getting used to with these printed uh, try-ins, but how can we make it a little more, more natural? Well, you know what a fanatic I am. I just showed you as far as uh, waxing dentures making them look natural. You could do the same thing with this, th these uh, printed try-ins too. So we can either use a, a denture-based stain. It takes a lot of time and it's, it's gonna cost money. It's gonna cost more money. Or what I do, I'll take some aesthetic co colored wax and I'll come over the whole surface. And if I design this denture with carvings and stippling and I cover it with this wax, nice molten wax, it really looks nice. You know, uh, it's a nice aesthetic looking uh, try-in. So, and uh, <clears throat> it's something that uh, I try to do on all the uh, digital denture cases. So. And there's your aesthetic colored wax here. Now we're ready to, uh, if everything goes well with the print, you know, printed try-in, we're ready to print the denture. So if everything comes back, maybe we have to make a couple of adjustments, we're ready to print the denture. So we're gonna talk about how we do that now. So, uh, and so the printed denture base, it's a Lucitone uh, denture base. And what I like about this product is it comes in many different shades. You know, so we have the original Lucitone material, the shade, a light, light reddish pink, opaque, dark reddish pink. So we can accommodate pretty much any, any shade of ginger, ginger for this, uh, uh, this type of printed material. So we're setting up the printer now. We pour the material into the printer. And once they're printed, we can do a number of these at a time too. And what, once they're printed, they're gonna have supports on them. You can see on the lingual of these, uh, in the middle pictures here, uh, of the lower, uh, we're gonna have those supports. And when it's, when it's printed and we take this out for the first time, it's not fully, fully uh, cured. And what we're gonna do is take off some of the supports on there, but not the lingual supports. Because otherwise, if we take those uh, other supports off of there, we're gonna distort the denture, it's gonna move a little bit. So at this point, you see we have a denture base with a bunch of sockets there. We're gonna uh, put those denture teeth and, and bond those denture teeth into the denture base. So first thing we're gonna do is take those uh, other parts off on the buckle area, uh, as they break off very easily. We clean it with denatured alcohol, and then we're ready to uh, bond our denture teeth into the base. So let's talk about the denture assembly. You know, what I love about this denture, denture is also we're utilizing IPN denture teeth, which is a good quality tooth, like I mentioned earlier. You know, wear resistance is there, the aesthetics are there. And the only thing they did different with this denture, these denture teeth, they eliminate a lot of the ridge lap so it'll fit into a digital denture. We don't have to worry about that, that tooth structure coming through the other side of the, the other denture on the tissue side. So in our next slide, you see a, a complex chart, uh, but the great thing about the three shape is that the characterization points set to indicate the position of the retromolar pads, canine points, and ridge points, and they couple it to, with the use of pounds triangle, and it allows the software to pick them all down for us. So everything I talked about before with the, the shape of the arch and trying to cusp the cuspid lines, that's all done for you, and these denture teeth are picked down for you uh, uh, automatically. And if you don't like the way they look, we can always change it and pick something else out. So, so they have an articulation key. They, 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 all the information we just scanned into the, uh, into the uh, software is gonna be utilized and then it's gonna pick out the denture teeth for us. <coughs> and there's some, a lot of different mold choices too with these uh, uh, IPN uh, digital denture teeth. And um, you could utilize you know, a lot of different shades and, and molds. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna condition these teeth. We wanna make sure there's a good bond between that denture base and, and those denture teeth. So we use something called a Fuse 1 material and we, we, we condition the teeth and then I'll start putting these in as they fit perfectly in each socket. So I'll start putting these in each socket. <clears throat> and normally I'll do about four at a time and I'll light yours for a few seconds and I stay, make sure it's in place. And once everything's done, what I'll do is uh, come over with a Fuse 3 material and what this is gonna be doing is gonna uh, fill in all those gaps you know, that I missed, especially in the cervical area. And then we're ready to final cure the denture. And we call it post-curing. So this takes about, uh, maybe about 20, 25, 26 minutes to post-cure it. Once you post-cure it, you take it out, you cut off those, um, those supports, and we finish and polish. Really, you don't have to do any finishing. And pretty much all we're doing is polishing, and there's the final denture. So it's aesthetic looking, it looks nice, it fits well. Uh, we've come a long way with these printed dentures. So, um, so we went through the overview of all the steps for the, for the printed denture, scan and design, print, wash and recycle, fuse and cure, and finish. So we save, uh, we save a lot of time. We can do up to eight bases too in, 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 uh, in about two hours, which is it's, it's pretty good. So we save a lot of time in the laboratory with printing these dentures, and it's a great material. 
So a lot of features and benefits with the material, you know, reduced tear, tear time, little to no adjustments, digital pre-occlusion, um, peace of mind with final denture outcome. And what I like about this is one of the best features I think about this material, it's, um, it's called the BAM factor and it's called body activated material. Uh, and what happens when the denture is placed in the mouth, the strength, the strength of the material increases from 1500 joules per square meter to about, I think it's uh, up to 3100 yeah, joules per square meter. So the longer it's in the patient's mouth, the stronger it gets. And <clears throat> some of the tests that have been done, you see some videos online about this, uh, with this uh, uh, technicians throwing these dentures off ladders and off a roof and running it over. And, and that's how strong this material is. So come a long way with this printed material. And then we're now actually using printed technology for hybrid transitionals. I'll talk about this more in my, one of my other seminars when I talk about uh, implant dentures and hybrid type cases. But what we're doing now, we're printing denture teeth and we're printing the denture bases. Also, we already have the access holes in place. So when we do a conversions, you don't have to worry about drilling holes and going over those temporary cylinders. So uh, that's already done for us. I just like to show that because we've come a long way with hybrid transitionals also. Another great system, I just gonna mention this briefly, is the Baltic Denture, this system by, by, by uh, uh, Sterngold. And they have their own software package, but you can see here, you know, everything is designed pretty much like I talked about earlier with full art setups. And it really works out well. And I, I like this system also, it's one of my favorites. So we a lot, of, a lot of choices to choose from now with digital dentures. I don't even have time to mention all of them right in, 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 this, uh, in this presentation. But we've come a long way with what we, we have to offer. I'm gonna show this little video here too with this doctor. Uh, but this is scanning the, uh, uh, the upper and lower bites. And we have this doctor talk a little bit about uh, visual dentures. You see how the scan comes into place. So as a prosthodontist, our practice really focuses on challenges and really meeting the challenges of the patients with conventional dentures is always a challenge in private practice. Our practice kind of sees the value of digital technology expanding and one of the things we've started incorporating is digital dentures in our practice partly because of the expedited treatment protocols where we can shorten clinical time which is always an advantage the more time we can cut out of a patient appointment and I like about this system too is you're able to utilize um, digital dentures for over so dentures. That is patients. one clear Severe. advantage that we have. Really great system. putting it back into the final mill. And being trained in um, the lost wax technique, um, casting, vesting, um, the IvoCap system. Um, I've done it all. Um, I Just like the repeatability of nice. digital dentures. Build, I know what I'm getting. We're getting there. uniform so pucks. We're getting um, less monomer in there. We're getting higher, higher processed denture bases that are stronger. Um, clinically, I notice a better fitting den uh, denture base. Um, with increased retention, it probably comes from the process of scanning, the printed side. Um, designing, um, having ideal There's no undercuts. bonding of teeth in these um, either. The teeth and are it's already giving in the us base. A clear advantage to make a better product for that patient. That's pretty cool. And yeah, teeth and denture base are fused into one milling puck and pre to prevent separation. So that's a pretty cool material. Uh, and it's one milling process, which is great. And you have different puck selections and uh, different Vita shades. Um, and different arch forms also with this. <clears throat> so that's another alternative. Uh, and we're gonna get into something we use a lot at the, um, in the laboratory. And this is the final denture of the, uh, the uh, Baltic denture right here. So one of the things we utilize a lot, with both the Pro FX mill denture, this is the Ivoclar mill denture, and the Tensply printed denture. Those, those are our two main options here, but we are starting to use the, the Baltic denture also. But let's talk about um, a simplified mill denture workflow. And pretty much what I talked about earlier, first department is your impression, preliminary impression, base plate and occlusal rim. And the second department is taking your right, right registration. And we do our printed try-in and then we mill it. And the fourth appointment, we can insert it. If you, if you take an impression, uh, a functional impression inside the right registration, it'll only be four appointments, which is great. So, and one of the things I like to get, I, I didn't mention this before, when you take your preliminary, uh, final impression, I like to get a papilla meter reading. So a papilla meter reading gives me an idea, an idea where that incisal edge is going to wind up, and I'm able to contour that bite registration on the bite rim a little bit closer to where it should be. <clears throat> so 
if you can, I'd like to use to get this papillometer ring reading on digital dentures. It'll kind of help us when we make our occlusal rings. And there's, your, there's a, if all we do is rest that uh, uh, papillometer on the on a papilla. And you see here, it's about 17 millimeters. I'm gonna probably add about two or three millimeters to this so you can see the incisal edge when the patient smiles. So but let's talk about the middle design CAD for, uh, uh, with the ProFX denture. So for full dentures, for single arch dentures, and for immediate dentures, we're gonna show some of the features and benefits on that also. What do we have here? We got about uh, 10 minutes. Okay, good, we have plenty of time. So let's go through uh, some of the options here. You can either mill the denture teeth out of uh, the Ivoclar Vivaden library, the blue line, Vivaden DCL, or Fenaris 2, or you can, you can take regular carter teeth and put it into the, the sockets also. Full arts now setup function, like I showed earlier, and special clinical tools and workflow options also. So Fenaris 2, this Vivaden Vita, Vita S DCL, which probably a lot of you are familiar with, the blue line teeth and Fenaris. Uh, and then we have full arch setups also. You have a choice. You know, you can use, use carded teeth or you can, you can mill the teeth. I have to be honest with you, most of the time on these dentures, we're milling these full arch setups or doing quadrants. And the software allows for complete control to change the shape of the denture teeth when we're milling it. It's important to be able to create that ideal occlusal contact for single arch dentures against natural teeth. So let's watch this and, and then see what we can do here. You can see how we can change the shape. We can bring these down into occlusion. We can make these teeth a little bit wider if we have to. As you can see here, I'm widening, widening the tooth. The occlusal surface is a little bit wider and we, want it, you know, we have that nice functional occlusion. So there's a lot you can do with these software tools. And you know, we don't have to do a complete reset when the tooth needs to be removed. You know, removing molars and premolars is as easy as a click of a mouse, which I'll show you here. We want to remove some teeth here on this denture setup and watch this. So we can click it and they're gone. So it's real easy to do. And so I love this digital aspect of uh, doing these setups and then placing these teeth in the correct position. So, and extracting teeth. I love this for immediate dentures. Now, uh, one of the things we've been pretty successful with is um, scanning uh, intraoral scans on our immediate dentures because usually, you know, when the denture is finished, we're doing a reline anyway. So, but what's great about this, I call this model surgery. All we have to do is highlight the tooth and click on it and it disappears. So we're doing extraction of teeth. We can do tissue contouring and we can do a great immediate denture with these, uh, with, uh, with uh, digital dentures with milling. We can smooth out the surface and we can then set our denture teeth. So great tool for, uh, uh, this software has great tools for immediate dentures also. So, and then there's a pre-preparation scan. The design for immediate dentures is simplified by utilizing the pre-prep scan and overlay function, allowing the user to set the denture teeth using the existing denture teeth as guidelines. So as you can see here, there's a pre-prep scan. We wanna make sure, we wanna see what it looks like when we, we set these denture teeth in, 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 on these immediate dentures. And you can see right here. So look how nice that looks and how easy it is. And what you see on the screen is what you're gonna get in the final, uh, final product. So, so let's look at the materials that we utilize for this uh, uh, ProFX Pro mill denture. So we have the Ivor-Base CAD and then we have the Vivident CAD. The Ivor-Base CAD is, is the, uh, pretty much the same material as the Ivor-Base material from Ivoclar. And then the Vivident CAD is the exact makeup of the denture teeth that you see on the individual cards, only they're milled. It's a PMMA, uh, it's a manufactured disc, it's homogenous, high density, uh, high uh, flexural strength with uh, high impact resistance. And physical properties are amazing. The fit and strength of this material is, is I think it's say, if, it's, if you mill the denture teeth and mill the denture base, I think it's five to eight times stronger than the traditional denture. The accuracy of fit is amazing, you know, especially on uppers. You know, we're, we're getting information from doctors now where they're not even putting post dams. We don't even have to put a post dam in the, in the denture anymore because the fit is so accurate. Sometimes we put two teeth with post, post damage, it's actually pushing this denture out. But the accuracy, accuracy of fit is amazing. It's really, you know, it, to me, it's phenomenal compared to traditional because of the shrinkage that you have with traditional curing methods. And these tooth colored discs, uh, you know, for permanent denture teeth, they're great. And they're double cross length material and the same material as uh, the denture teeth that Ivoclar sells. So, aesthetics are beautiful. Let's look at this. I want to see if you can tell this now. We have two sides here. One side is the milled Ivoclar teeth. The other side is the carded teeth. I'm going to split these down the middle here and you tell me which is which. And I always get this confused because I, can't, I really can't tell the difference. So, so pretty much on the left-hand side, uh, you know, we have the, uh, the, the Vivident um, CAD. 
and the right hand side is the scarlet teeth. So it's it's pretty cool. So I mean, it's hard to tell the difference. Lower opacity, anatomical shape, good height. Uh, the height of contour is, is very natural looking, and the surface design is very nice. I, I, it has a little bit of lingual anatomy on these teeth. And then you have your translucency. There's a new puck now that's out there where you can adjust the translucency on these teeth also. So you can have more of an incisal translucency. I'll also show you on the, on the screen here. I'll see if we, if we do this here. Oops, let me go back here. Yeah, it's not showing, but you can actually uh, measure, you can actually adjust the translucency on the, there it goes, yeah. And this is by positioning the puck in the right position and you can have more translucency or less translucency on these dentures here. That's pretty interesting too. So, and we're doing pretty much what we're doing or we did earlier, we're bonding these teeth in the denture base. They have their own bonding uh, agent. And then uh, we, we, we cure it and those denture teeth are bonded. And let me tell you, they fuse really well with the denture base. It's a strong bond. You don't have to worry. You don't see any line of demarcation. You don't see any, any separation. It's, it really looks natural looking. So, and then once that's done, if, if, once we're milling these teeth, it goes back in the, uh, the PM7 mill and it's final, final milled. And so we have something called an oversized milling where it's not 100% milled, it comes out. We bond our, our, our uh, full arches, our quadrant arches, our milled teeth, arches and milled teeth in there, put it back in the PM7, and then it's, it's finally milled. So pretty much the same uh, functions as a, as a printed denture. We scan the design, and then we have our, uh, we, our oversized milling process. As you can see here, we bond the teeth, put a fine milling process, which takes about another 90 minutes. A lot more time it takes to do a mill denture than it does a printed denture. And then when it comes out, it's really no, no finishing at all. All you really have to do is polish it, unless you want to add some more anatomy to it. So about 150 million minutes uh, milling time total. And there's your final mill denture. This is one of the dentures I did, a final mill denture. Came out beautiful, really nice. So that's good. And now the case came out with, they just launched this one disc, pretty much like the Baltic system. One disc, one, one, one milling and one denture. So, uh, there's, so you have an option of using the milled, milled denture teeth, or they have one milling puck, one puck, but just everything in, in one puck. And you can adjust the, you know, the, uh, I guess the incisal edges. And, and it's kind of tricky though. It takes a little getting used to get the position, position just, to, just, just the right way in order to get the right uh, effects. So that's called the motion. So, and it's uh, just, it's like a shell geometry and you have the bonding of the denture teeth and the puck in one. So. With that, can we make a better denture? Which, you know, uh, I think we can. I think right now we're, we're at the point we can make a better denture, uh, especially with digital dentures and milling and, and printing. Uh, and again, why choose digital dentures? Accuracy of fit, bacteria resistance, great functional occlusion, electronic record. This is one I, I didn't mention earlier. You always have the elect that electronic record. So that, that patient loses a denture. You always have you have to call us at the laboratory and say, hey, listen, the dog ate the denture or the uh, patient lost that denture. Can you make another one? Yes, we can do one right away for you. So, because we have all, all that electronic information in our files. And the uniformity of thickness is there, and we have that same thickness and uniformity, and it helps the patient feel more comfortable with that denture in the mouth. I want to show you, and a monolithic strength, I mentioned, it's about eight times stronger than a traditional analog denture with the testing that's been done. I'm going to show a short video here uh, with the aesthetics and fit on these uh, in this denture here. So, let, let's watch this little video. Close, open. It's close. actually suction tap, on a lower tap, tap. denture on this. Stay closed and then move your jaw side to side. Just relax, open up, bite down, tap, tap, tap. Again, Aesthetics are nice, side this to side. function. What is he, try, what he tries to take it out of the mouth now. And just relax. Retention of lower denture is very good. Great fit. Retention of the upper denture. Very hard to break. Not to worry about eating with those dentures. You have to go to both sides in order to. There we go. Get the. I'm not going to get, I don't have time to get into the advanced workflow today. So uh, there is an advanced workflow using di different tools. Uh, and we can, you can look that up online also. I just want to just to move on to the questions now because we covered most of the 
um, important aspects of the digital technology. But you know, you know, at Dental Services Group, you know, we're excited to offer you, the clinician, all these great options on digital dentures, and we're here to support you in any way we can. And you know, with that, I just want to thank you all for being with us tonight. Um, if you know, I want to open this up to questions, but you know, we've come a long way with advancement in dental technology. I'm excited. This is my 43rd year in the business, and I'm still excited about this technology, and I think you should be too, because there's a lot of uh, options out there to choose from.